Today, I'm releasing a brand new 3 Series pedal into the world. It's super usable, it's easy, it's like $99. That's like two cups of coffee. We're just gonna show it to you and then you make your decisions. I'm sitting here at a table with 100 tube screamers and there's actually more in the room. But as of right now, there's 101. This is the release of the JHS 3 Series Screamer. And I know what you're thinking, I know what you're asking, and I know what you're already fiercely typing in the comments. Why another Tube Screamer? Why would we do this? Well, it ties back to the history of JHS and the requests we've had for this specific circuit. I first started tinkering with the circuit of the Tube Screamer when I was learning to modify and build pedals and to understand classic circuitry. And that led to me buying TS9s or you as customers sending in your TS9 to me and I would modify it into what I called the JHS Strong Mod. I first started doing these roughly 2008 or 2009 and there's quite a few out there and it became a very popular alternative alternative for people who were okay with the Tube Screamer, but wanted it to be louder, clearer, and enough different that no one else was doing a mod in that fashion. I remember doing these mods saying, I'll never make a Tube Screamer style pedal. There's just too many of them, but I'll do the mods. Well, that didn't last long because a good friend of mine said, hey, can you build a Tube Screamer pedal and your Morning Glory together? And that was the invention of the double barrel. This is the current version, but we've also been building this for over a decade. Then people kept hounding me to have the Tube Screamer version inside of the double barrel because it was really unique. So I gave in again and made my third take on a singular Tube Screamer pedal called the JHS 808. Now this pedal did really well, but I chose out of my stubbornness, not wanting to do a Tube Screamer, and I discontinued it and did something kind of fresh with the circuit. And originally the idea was this is a Tube Screamer for bass players, and it was called the Low Drive. So this did really well in an odd way. I intended it for bass players, but all of these famous guitarists started using it because of the low end content it let through and one thing led to another. So I took this, updated it once again, and then made the Moonshine, which is technically the version two of the low drive, which is technically a modified version of the 808 that was technically pulled from this, that was technically pulled and developed from the first mods, and then alongside the update to the Moonshine a little bit later, I finished my second multi-mode pedal, which was insanely hard, and it was nine Tube Screamer pedals in one pedal, all analog circuitry, and this has been one of the best-selling pedals we've ever done, and it includes a JHS mode when you go all the way around, and that JHS mode goes all the way back and is a perfect replica of the first mod I ever did. So, that's what this is. For the first time ever, a standalone, singular made JHS pedal that is exactly the JHS mode or the strong mod. Everyone's been asking for it, so now you got it. Now that you've seen this screamer, I think it's worth talking about why in the world are there so many screamer style pedals? Why do I wanna offer this? What's the point? Well, it really starts with the fact that the Tube Screamer is the SM57 of guitar pedals. It's the Fender Stratocaster. It's the Yamaha NS10 speakers. If you don't know what those things are, they are the basic necessities of what they do. Everyone uses that mic. Everyone uses those studio monitors. And the Tube Screamer is on every style of recording literally since its debut in 1979. And it all started when Boss releases the Compact Series in 77 with a pedal called the OD-1. And then two years later, a Maxon engineer took this circuit, a brand new style of soft clipping, and altered it into the TS-808 by adding a tone control, a different symmetry of clipping, and a couple little changes. And for some reason, 
this pedal far outweighs the OD-1 historically, and to be honest, it's probably because it's green or something. I have no idea, but this is legendary. And then they adapt it into the TS-9. This goes away with different Tube Screamer versions like the TS-10 later on that's really famous. But at the end of the day, this comes back and the Tube Screamer has held its place as the most important pedal ever made. I would venture to say, if NASA cared to show aliens what pedal we use, they would send this up on the Voyager next to Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good as they did to display, here's what rock and roll is. This is the pedal of all pedals. So that's why we continue to make them. And also we continue to make them because you guys buy them because they work in every single genre every time. I've often laughed about everything I've ever done very extremely innovative and difficult. Those rarely sell well, but something like the Bonsai is our best selling pedal. And it goes to say, it's like the McDonald's thing. Everyone claims they don't buy a McDonald's cheeseburger ever, but they sell a billion. No one admits to going to McDonald's. They sell six billion hamburgers a day. There's only 300 million people in this country. It's like, hmm, I'm not a calculus teacher, but I think everyone's lying. All of us use Tube Screamers. This first jam is what I go to for Tube Screamers when I need them. And it is that weird, squishy, spongy, gooey, thick, thin strat thing. I don't know, neck pickup. Yeah, it's thick and thin, slushy, gushy, but solid. I don't know how to describe it. It is what it is. So I have a strat. I'm gonna use the bridge pickup for this chordal stab thing. So it's like real glistening. I'm really using some words here. And then the neck pickup is gonna have this chewy strat thing that you've all heard a million times. Think John Mayer, think people that play strats like that, right? So I'm gonna set it up with the volume around here because this is crazy powerful and loud. That volume will stay pretty low and you'll see that it's really powerful and it's gonna overdrive my Fender style amp. Then the tone control, I'm gonna keep it fairly on the dark end, but even though it's dark, the modifications are letting some presence through, which is something the normal Tube Screamer really struggles with. And then the drive, we're gonna put it kind of a little more than halfway. And the most important part of this tonal palette, this tonal recipe, is that we put the switch up and this engages a different forward voltage in the clipping, meaning the normal Tube Screamer is a very compressed, kind of chopped off sound that has a lot of hairiness to it in the distortion kind of feel. When we go up on this, it raises the headroom of that clipping and it feels just like a cranked amp. And that is not a buzzword car sells many thing to say. It is what it is. So I'm gonna do this and I'll add some spring reverb from the amp and let's do it. Next up, I'm gonna pick up my offset guitar and embrace the dad that I am and try to do some dad slacker, like a thing, like a lazy thing, like a thing where there's a lot of pain inside of me, but I'm happy about it and I'm at a Whole Foods and the Whole Foods is haunted and um, they're out of the stuff I came to buy. So I end up wandering around. You ever do that? And then you're just like, why am I here? And then you go back home. That's that gonna be what this song's about. So I'm gonna use this setting where I turn up the screamer 
pretty loud. The gain is back to a much less than the last setting. And then I'm gonna brighten it up quite a bit and we're gonna have that toggle up again. And I'm gonna use the three series delay. It's a delay in the three series that makes the sound of delay for your guitar. It's also $99. And I'm gonna do a slap back thing, like a big hard single repeat. And then at the end, you know, because I'm in this Whole Foods and I'm lost and I get back in my car, I'm probably gonna mess with the speed knob and like get some of my anger out. Yeah. Wow. jam i will have to make one statement it was a little more of a trader joe's vibe uh it wasn't quite whole foods it was more of a trader joe's thing the dark chocolate peanut butter cup thing Oh because yeah. i picked some of those up and then it kind of it elevated it you know got elevated let's go to the next song not the next song but the next version of let's we're, we're gonna move along to the next setting and that'll have a song. This next track, I'm gonna pick up a Telecaster and I'm gonna embrace America, whatever that means, and just see what happens. I'm gonna use basically the same setting, but I am gonna push the toggle down so it's the more symmetrical, more compressed clipping. And then I'm gonna show you how well this stacks. There's probably no better pedal circuit on the face of our universe, at least, where you can stack anything with it. The Tube Screamer circuit is super stackable, and I dare say that these mods make it even more stackable because of how it opens up some of that crunchiness and the mid-range that's normally seen in the Screamer. It makes it a little more pairable with other pedals, so I'm gonna use a Morning Glory, uh, set pretty minimal, like as an always-on kind of vibe uh, in the low gain position. I'll turn that on for a solo and we'll just, we'll just stack these. We'll stack them and see what happens. Hey, can I use one on bass? Well, it's a guitar pedal. But can I use it on bass? I mean, it's made for guitar though. There's no way oh, a bass I'm would asking, sound. Can I use it on my bass? Can I try it? You can try it. Can you can try it, but we all know that you can't plug basses into guitar pedals. It'll break the bass. I don't know. Okay. Whatever, your, your choice.
Yes, and that sounded really good on bass. Thanks, man. It's like it cut exactly what needed to be cut from the bass. Yep. So you don't have to have all the low end for your bass to sound good. No, nah, man, that's what I've been saying forever. It's almost like professional recordings and professional live music actually remove some low end. Right. Exactly. And so a pedal like this and the way it's modified does that for you. That's interesting. Also, I found it interesting that I used a capo. Sometimes it feels good to use a capo. You just put it on the knobs like that and move on. Whoa! Oh. Capo that screamer. On this last jam, I'm going to do something that I honestly don't do. So in a sense, I'm going to be pretending. You could say I'm lying to you that I actually know what I'm doing. I know the theory. I know the technique. I know the application. But as a player, I don't care for the sound. But it sounds good, so I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm really lazy as well, so I don't want to move my amp off the camera. There's a cranked Marshall Plexi, and then I'm going to slam into that already dirty Marshall sound with the Screamer as a boost. Now I have the gain turned really low, I have the tone really bright, and then I have the volume really loud. So this does a thing that requires me to use a buzzword phrase that I hate. But it is what it is. It really tightens up the low end. Ugh. I hate that I had to say tightens up the low end. I don't ever want to say tightens up the low end again, but this really tightens up the low end, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some delay. I'm going to pull out a slide and try to harness my inner ret shawl, and I'm going to tighten up the low end. <laughs> That was basically if the Almond Brothers covered Blink-182's All the Small Things, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I also like the jam because you got to see me play a Les Paul, and when I hold a Les Paul, it looks like a mandolin, so I hope you enjoyed that. And also, I do want to brag and say that my slide tone, choice of notes, and the way the Screamer worked with my slide is hands down better than anything Retschel's ever dreamed of being or doing. Sick burn. With that said though, on a serious note, uh, the Tube Screamer is amazing. It is epic for a reason, and it is the pedal we should send to space so that alien civilizations have some good mid-range. And the reason that is so is because it works in every single genre. We could have done 12, 15 jams if we were good enough to cover different genres, and it would have applied in all of them. Everything from jazz to metal, all of it. So. It's a cool pedal, and for 99 bucks, if you've never used a Tube Screamer, it's a really good version to go with because in the down position, it gives you the classic flavor, yet it's different, and then in the up position, it's very, very different. So yeah, check that out, or go buy something of the million other variants out here. Just try a Tube Screamer, that's what's important, and let's go to record time. Today's record time feels appropriate to pull out Stevie Ray Vaughan. This is an Essentials vinyl. It has basically four sides to it and it has all the greatest hits. So if you're not familiar with Stevie Ray Vaughan, a big piece of his sound was that he had a lot of tube amps on stage. They're all turned up and he smashed them with a Tube Screamer style circuit. Uh, TS-808, TS-9, but he preferred the TS-10. So you hear it all over the stuff. My favorite tracks are the more traditional blues tracks that I think he did so well. And then the unique things that are kind of like these takes on the Hendrix style, like Lenny, Little Wing, of course, and then probably Texas Flood being a very traditional kind of Texas blues jam. If you're not familiar, check this out. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about him. And if you are familiar, what's your favorite song and favorite album? Yeah, Steve Ray Vaughan.
there's no other representation of using a tube screamer uh, as much as this guy did. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there are a lot more demos of this that are very helpful to see different players, different styles. Those are linked in the descriptions below. It's 99 bucks, fantastic bargain, and it's a really versatile pedal that has been requested for years and years that we do something like this um, in a simple package. So here it is, check it out. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to get notifications of all the future episodes. Also, there is a link in the description below where you can jam with all these jams over at Band Lab. That's it. Have a great day.